everybody. I want to welcome you to tonight's service. I want to thank you for watching us. I just pray that God is going to speak to your heart. I have a word I want to give you as we start this evening's worship time. I want you to be engaged in what God is about to do. You see, sometimes I think we're entertained by our services. We watch, we enjoy, but we really don't get engaged. And tonight, I want to invite you and encourage you to engage in the worship, engage in the words. Let the Spirit of God move in your life and respond to Him, not just watching. I think one thing we've got to be careful of, especially during this time of everything being online and you're watching from your home or wherever, it becomes more of an entertainment aspect. And I want to remind you, our relationship with God, our encounter with the Holy Spirit is more about engaging Him and not just entertained by the presence of God. So let's enter in, let's pursue God, worship Him in spirit and in truth, and open your heart and say, Lord, tonight I want to engage you, I want to experience you in a way that I never have before. Let's go after Jesus as we worship Him together.
What a wonderful time of worship we've had tonight. I feel like I've engaged God's presence and he's spoken to my heart through the worship and I'm ready now to receive the word of the living God. I have a word for you tonight. I believe that God has spoken to my heart and wants to convey to you a message. And that message is this, who are you bowing to? Who do you feel the pressure to submit to? That's the word that I wanna give you tonight. And I believe that we need to start out by declaring that Jesus is the Lord of our lives. We need to declare the Lordship of Jesus over who we are and everything that we have and whatever future God may have for us, we need to declare that. You see, right now we're living in a society where everybody's trying to dictate to us who our loyalties, what our loyalties should be and who should be the Lord over our lives and all these things. We feel these external pressures that are pressing in. And I feel that, and I'm sure you do as well. We feel like there's so many things going on around us that we're needing to submit or succumb to certain expectations. I wanna tell you something. There's only one person in our lives that matter, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. As much as we may love others and love our family and love our country and all of that, and you're feeling all those pressures right now, I wanna tell you this. I know many of you are feeling that pressure. You're feeling the pressure that we need to say that black lives matter or white lives matter or this matters or that matters or we are, we are conservative or we are liberal or we are whatever and we almost feel like everybody's making us choose sides. I, I feel that. I feel like right now that I've got to choose sides. I've got to decide who I'm going to be with, who I'm going to bend to, who I'm going to bow to, what I'm going to be part of. And I want to say something tonight. My love and my loyalty lies with Jesus Christ alone. No political party, no class, no color, no culture, no anything other than Christ himself. But that doesn't mean I don't love everybody. That doesn't mean that I want, don't want to be kind and compassionate to everybody because I do. But I don't want to do what I do because someone else is giving me their own convictions and expectations. I think we have to be careful that we don't find ourselves submitting and just going along with whatever society is dictating is is normal and right. I believe we need to be straight aligned with the Word of God, that we need to keep God's Word and not just be submitting to whatever pressures or expectations other people have. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're talking about who are you bowing to? What are you bowing to in your life? My key thought is this. Society is becoming ever more demanding for us to bow to the pressures of civil conformity, that we see society around us telling us that we need to bend our knees to this or bow to that or go along with this. We see it's been going on culturally for a long time. You know, nowadays we're supposed to accept homosexuality. We're supposed to accept same-sex marriage. We're supposed to accept this. And nowadays they've passed laws that says it's okay to smoke marijuana. And, and I see a cultural move. It's acceptable for drinking in the church and all these things. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm not here just to preach on cultural things, but I'm here to tell you we must align with the word of God. It doesn't matter if it's socially acceptable or not. It doesn't matter if someone says they think it's right or not. What does God's word say? What is the Holy Spirit leading you to do? And I feel that pressure. And that's something that has continued to exist since the beginning of time. Man who does not want to live for God wants to get others to conform who do want to live for God. Those who have made a choice to love God and serve God and follow God feel the external pressures of others who are telling them, well, you, you don't need to live that way. And I want to read, if you have your Bible, you can join me in Daniel chapter 3. We're going to look there at a story that's from, very familiar to many of you. It's the story of what we call the three Hebrew children. These are young men. And I love this story because it shows me three young men at a very influential, very important time of their lives. A time where they've got everything in front of them. And as they look at this place where they've come to, where they're put in a position where they will either bend or bow or they will have to give their lives, they make a decision. They have already made their decision. They say, as for us, we will serve the Lord our God and serve Him only. And I want to look at that. My question for you tonight is what pressure are you bowing to in your life? I think all of us feel a lot of pressure. I think all of us feel pressure as husbands and wives and men and women and, and maybe college students or whatever you are, whatever your status is in life, you feel that pressure to bow, to conform to certain societal expectations. I wanna tell you something. Remind yourself tonight, we are not of this world. We serve a kingdom that is not of this world. Jesus felt that pressure. He was pressured on all sides, but he did always that that pleased the Father. He always lived with his 
understanding and his commitment that he was here for one reason, that was to fulfill the will that God had placed on his life. And that's what we need to understand tonight. We need to make a decision that we are here for one reason, and that one reason is to know Christ and to make him known, to live out the fullness of God's will for our lives, not to conform, not to just go along with what other people expect us. And there's expectations placed on us from all directions, expectations from society, expectations from our family, expectations from our church, and all those things pile up on us and they become pressure. And we feel like we've got to do what everybody else wants us to do. I want to tell you something. You have one loyalty that you must live your life for. And that loyalty is to the Lord Jesus Christ. He died for you. You should live for him. Let's read in Daniel chapter 3. We're going to read verses 13 through 18. Then Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage and ordered that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him. When they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is this true? Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you refuse to serve my gods or to worship the gold statue that I have set up? Verse 15, I will give you one more chance to bow down. I want you to notice, Satan's always pressuring you to bow down. One more chance to get it right. I want to tell you something. I don't care who tells you what's right or wrong. If it is not in agreement with the Word of God, it is not right. It doesn't matter if the majority of people, if everybody you know says this is right. If you've read God's Word and the Holy Spirit has given you a conviction about the Word of God, having done all to stand, stand your ground. Make your mind up. This is what I believe. This is where I stand. This is where I'm going. My friends, in a day in which society is backsliding and falling away from God and so many people are drifting even in the church and people that are supposed to be born again Christians are, are going along societal with everything that's happening. We need to make up our minds that we will be the people of God. We will be a holy people separated, called out and set apart for the kingdom of God. That we will not allow ourselves to be influenced by the external pressures. But that we will set our eyes on Jesus and we'll press on to the prize and we will be what God has called us to be. And I see right here, he says, I'm going to give you one more chance. You see, that's what the devil says to us. He says, you've got one more chance to get it right. you got one more chance and if you don't, everybody else is going to be against you. Let me tell you something. If everybody in the world disapproves of you, but Jesus approves of you, that's the only approval you need. That's the only approval that we need is to know that we have heard him say, well done, my good, faithful servant, pleasing to our Lord. That's what matters. He said, I'm going to give you one more chance to bow and worship the statue that I have made when you hear the sound of the musical instruments, but if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. And then what God will be able to rescue from my power? Oh, I hear that question. And then what God? What God? You tell him what God? My God. My God is able to deliver me. That's what these three young men said. They said, you want to know what God he is? He's the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God that was in all beginning and end and has no beginning or no end, the one that's eternal and powerful and has all authority in heaven and earth. My God, the loving, faithful, kind, generous, good God, that's my God. And my God is going to deliver me no matter what pressure I have been placed under. I know that God, my God, is able to deliver me. And that's what they knew. And that's what they declared. It goes on to say, so in verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. Can I say that to you tonight? With everybody trying to pressure you to do certain things, with everybody trying to tell you what you need to do, you need to say, we are not our own defenders. We don't have to defend ourselves. The Lord is my defense. The Lord is the one that will defend me. The Lord is the one who will direct me and take care of me. I don't need to stand for myself because when I stand, God stands beside me. I have Jesus Christ as the Lord of my life standing right beside me. I take that and receive that in faith tonight that I know I never walk alone. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And tonight I stand on that promise and I make that declaration that I am never alone, that God promised he would be with me to the ends of the earth, that Jesus himself said, I'm with you always, even to the ends of the age. And I believe that. I believe right now when I stand for him, he stands beside me. Can you say that? When I stand for Jesus, I know that he stands beside me. And my friend, that's my confidence. That's my hope. That's the hope that they had. They said, as they looked at it, they said, we know that we don't have to defend ourselves. For if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. Our God is able to deliver us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he does it, we want, you to make it, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue that you've set up. 
under these pressures, under these severe circumstances, these three young men had already made up their mind. They'd already made their commitment. Their, they knew where their loyalty lied. And they said, we have already, we don't have to even think about it. We know where we stand. Do you know where you stand tonight? Do you know where you stand when the pressures begin to build? Because I'm telling you, friend, I believe in these last days, there's this falling away that's taking place. This spirit of deception is moving across the earth. There's so many things, and even people that are Christians and churches that identify themselves as Christian churches are going to begin to move away from the things of God, begin to surrender the things of God. I think tonight of one of my dear fellowships of churches that have moved away from the things of God, that are even debating and discussing and even accepting things that are totally in opposition to the Word of God. When you see other people, people moving away from God and accepting things that are in opposition to the Word of God, where will you stand? That's where we have to make up our mind. Our loyalties do not lie with the church or the fellowship that we're connected to. Our loyalties lie with Christ, the head of the church. And I want to challenge you tonight, when those pressures, when the heat begins to rise, we need to have already made up our minds. And I love this story because you know what? You can go on to read it. You know what it says. It says, when they were thrown into the fire, can I tell you something? Sometimes God delivers us from the fire, and sometimes God delivers us in the fire. And I don't know what's going on in your life. You may be in the fire right now, but I can promise you one thing, just like we've read here, just like I've already said, that when you're in the fire, Jesus will be the person in the fire with you. He's the fourth man in the fire. He's right beside you. And so you don't have to bend to the pressures that you may be facing tonight. I want to look at another passage of Scripture. Because you know what? Jesus faced this same pressure. Jesus himself was faced with the pressure of bending and bowing. Who will you bow to? We look in Matthew chapter 4, verse 8 through 10. It says there, when the devil came to tempt Jesus, he tempted him in various ways. He tempted him in the pride of life. He tempted him with the lust of the flesh. He tempted him in all ways. And then it says in chapter 4, Matthew, verse 8 through 10, Next the devil took him to a place, the peak of a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel, if you will bow down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him, for the scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve him alone. I want to make a point right here something that I was sharing Wednesday night that I want to emphasize tonight. Everybody's telling you to bend and bow. Bow to this, bow to that, bow to the other. And the reason that is is because when you bend or bow, you are submitting to some other authority. You know, if you were to go into a king's court, especially in days gone by, when you walked into the king's court, if you were there and the king or the queen was there, then you were to kneel before the king. And if you didn't, then you were disrespecting the authority. I want to tell you something. To bend or bow is to acknowledge someone else's authority over your life. And we need to understand there is only one person that we're subjection, subjected to their authority, and that's Jesus Christ of the Lord of our lives. Now, we know there's other authority in the world. There's other authority in our country. We have authority here, and we respect that authority because that authority has been set up by God. But when I bend my knee, I bend my knee for Jesus Christ alone, not for anybody else, because there's only one God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and that is all centered upon Jesus Christ. And so I will not bend or bow for anything else. Jesus was faced with that. You see, the reason why Satan wanted Jesus to bow and worship him is because he wanted Jesus to submit to his authority. In other words, to surrender back to the authority of the devil. Anytime you bow to any pressure, anything in your life that's in opposition to the word of God, you are worshiping Satan. I said this Wednesday night, and I want to say it again. Many of us would never think about doing satanic worship. We would never do anything that worshiped Satan in our understanding. But anytime we submit to temptation, anytime we surrender to those things in our lives that are in direct opposition to the Word of God, we are worshiping Satan because to be rebellious, to surrender to lawlessness, to submit to temptation is to bend our knee to Satan. Now, you may not think about it that way, but it's true. Anytime that I do something that is directly opposed to the Word of God, and I know that I do, it's like me getting down on my knee and saying, Satan, I bow and worship you. Can you make a commitment with me tonight? I will not willingly, knowingly bow to anything Satan puts in my life. I'm not gonna to surrender to temptation. 
I'm not going to do anything that I know is in opposition to the word of God. Satan, you may say to me to bend my knee, but I will not because you know why? I am a born again, spirit filled child of God. I have kingdom authority in my life. I walk in that authority. I live in that authority. So if I'm bending my knee, I'm submitting my authority to the devil. And tonight I make a declaration. I stand on the word of God. I will walk in the word of God. I will live out the word of God because God has called me to live in the authority he's given me to overcome all all the obstacles and all the things, the schemes and the plans of my enemy. And so right now, Satan's trying to get you to submit to some things, just like he did Jesus. But you know what Jesus did? What you need to do tonight. It is written. Make a declaration on the word of God. As long as you are standing on God's word, as long as you are submitting to God and, and keeping his word, you do not have to bend your knee to anything this, the devil or this world dictates that you have to. I want to look at one other passage tonight. And that's in Romans chapter 14, verse 11. Jesus in Matthew said, I will not bend or bow. And because he did not bend or bow, he was established. His kingdom is established. Romans chapter 14, verse 11. For the scriptures say, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bend to me and every tongue will declare allegiance to God. I want to tell you something. There will come a day where you and I will bend our knees before Jesus. And I think there's one thing we need to do. We need to get used to bending before Jesus because you know what? If he's Lord of our lives here, then we stand before him there. He will acknowledge us. I believe if we acknowledge him in this life, he will acknowledge us in the life which is to come. I believe that we must bend our knees. Can you, I, I, I said to this to the congregation on Wednesday night, and I, you may have heard me, and I want to reemphasize it. We need to submit our will to God. We need to pray that prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we worship you as the sovereign, supreme God. We acknowledge you and honor you, God, as the creator of the heavens and the earth. And we declare Jesus is the son of God who came and took away the sin of the world and who was killed, destroyed. He was crucified, buried, and resurrected. And I declare tonight, Jesus, you are the resurrected Lord. You're the one that was dead and is alive and lives forevermore. And you are my redeemer. You're my high priest who ever lives and intercedes on my behalf on the right hand side of the Father. And tonight, my knee bends and my tongue confesses Jesus Christ you're the Lord of my life that's what I'm declaring tonight I'm declaring that my knees will not bend to anything else I'm not going to bend to pressures pressure of this world because society is like a shifting wind it's here and there if you go along with whatever society is telling you are right or wrong you'll be here and there you'll be up and down you'll but many times most of the time you'll be in opposition to the word of God because our society is a rebellious society. It does not want to submit. It does not want to surrender. In the days in which we live, we see everybody trying to do what is right in their own eyes. And you're not considered to be, uh, you're not considered to be kind and considered if you don't just do what everybody thinks you ought to do. I want to tell you something. You can stand on the word of God and people can call you whatever they want to call you. But when the time comes and your knee bends before Jesus Christ, he will acknowledge you because you acknowledged him before men. He will acknowledge you before the Heavenly Father. Do we understand that tonight? There will come a time where we will stand before the throne of God. We will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give account for the deeds done in our body. We will all stand before God and we'll have to submit to the authority. And my friend, I want to tell you something. I think it is so important that we, as the body of Christ, Submit to his lordship. We declare, I, I know I'm an American. You may be, most of you probably are Americans. We say we are Americans. We submit to the, the president and the authority, but that's all good and fine. But let me tell you something. My first allegiance is not to my country. My first allegiance is to Jesus. And his kingdom is not of this world. And I'm not of this world. I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. And I will not live according to the world's principles that are being dictated down to me. It doesn't matter what Nebuchadnezzar says. It doesn't matter what society I live in. It doesn't matter what's going on around me. It doesn't matter what everybody tells me right or wrong. If it's in disagreement or if it's in disalignment with the word of God, then I choose to keep the word. I choose today. You know what? I choose to keep God's word. Whether it's right in your eyes, you make up that. But I choose to keep God's word. And I declare that over my life. I want to go on and say these things. There are what we call cultural convictions. Cultural convictions. Society is telling us what is right and wrong. 
Society is ever changing and telling us this is right and this is wrong. And that's why the church, I see it, my heart breaks because so many churches are beginning to let culture, society, determine their convictions. My friend, if we do that, then we will be constantly shifting back and forth because society, one day it's this and one day it's that. We need to stand on the Word of God. The Word of God is sure and certain. It doesn't change. The winds may blow. The winds may come and go. But I believe God's Word stays the same and is strong and sure. And we need to stand, not on cultural convictions, but we need to stand on the Word of God. We need to have Christ-centered choices. We need to make sure every choice we make is based on Christ as the center and the foundation of our life. Every decision I make needs to be based on Jesus. You are the Lord of my life. You're the God of my salvation. You're the one in whom I trust. And I'm going to do what Jesus said. You know what Jesus said, don't you? He said, if you obey my commandments, then you are my disciples. If you love him, you will keep his commandments. And if I don't keep his commandments, it doesn't matter what lip service I give him. I truly do not love him. I want to tell you something. I see people bending their knees and bowing their knees. And I'm not just talking about politicians. I'm talking about people who are, quote, Christians and Christ followers, and yet they're submitting to the authority of the world and the society's convictions around them. I want to tell you something, my friends. Stand up. We used to sing a song, stand up. Stand up for Jesus, you soldiers of the cross. His banner must not suffer loss. Can I tell you that song still rings in my heart? We are soldiers for the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not here to be confrontational. We're not here to try to injure people but we are here to stand our ground and to stand up for Christ and if it means a confrontation because of the word of God then let us stand up for what we believe let us give reason for the hope that is within us let us be bold in our witness let us declare our convictions let us live the life of righteousness that God has called us to live and not compromise not bend down or bow to the things of this world but to be exactly what God has called us to be I feel that urgency in my spirit to challenge the body of Christ Friends, it's time to stand, not bend, not bow. It's time to, to, to declare who we are and what we believe. It's time for us to come out of the closet and to begin to be bold in our witness, to give reason for the hope that we have because the hope of the world is Christ in us. And we've got to declare that. We've got to declare it. We don't need to be angry. We don't need to come across as being religious, but we definitely need to declare the truth in a way of compassion and love. And I want to tell you something. I need to say this. We need to declare that the love of Christ is for all people. That we love all people. Because God loves all people. And it doesn't matter what color they are or class they are. My friend, if we see people through the lens of color, then we're not seeing them through the eyes of Christ. We need to see people through the eyes of God. We need to see people because God's word says he's not willing that anyone should perish. That God is not a respecter of persons. We need to declare that over our lives tonight. And we will not let society tell us that we need to do anything other than love everyone as Christ first loved us. That by this they will know that we are the disciples of God. That's what we need to have. Let me close my message with you tonight. Romans chapter 14 verses 7 and 8 and then verse 12 says this. For we don't live for ourselves or die for ourselves. I don't live for myself. You see, there's one thing going on in our culture that we need to totally reject, and that's that we are here to live for ourselves, that it's all about us. My friend, Jesus said, if you don't lose your life, you cannot be my disciple. If you would save it, you must first lose your life. We need to lose our lives. There's a whole lot of dead men walking around. And what I mean by that is, you know, we said that we have died to ourselves, that we might live for God. But then there's a whole lot of flesh that's been resurrected. And Lord, I pray tonight, let me die to myself so I can live for somebody else. True fulfillment comes by living your life to serve others. Jesus didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And we need to do the same thing. We don't live for ourselves. We live for others. That's exactly what it says in Romans 14, verse 7 and 8. We don't live for ourselves or, or die for ourselves. If we live, it is to honor the Lord. And if we die, it's to honor the Lord. So, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. My life is not my own. I've been bought by the precious price of the blood of Jesus Christ. In view of God's mercy, let us offer our lives as living sacrifices, pure and holy, acceptable in His sight. 
in view of what God's done for us. He died for me. Do you really believe that? You do really believe that God became a man. Jesus became a man, lived a sinless life, died a cruel death, and on that cross, when he could have saved himself, he stayed there and he saved you. If you really believe that, how can you not give your life to serve Jesus Christ? How can you not submit to his lordship alone? That's what I declare we need to have tonight. Submit to the Lord Jesus and live for him. He goes on to say, yes, each of us will give a personal account to God. One day, we're all going to stand before the judgment seat of, of Christ. And then every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. I want to tell you something as I close this message. I've asked you to begin, who are you bowing to? And I want to tell you something. Every day that we live, we need to start that day off by bowing our knees lifting our hands and lifting our voices and saying, Jesus, I bow to you. I submit to you. I surrender to your authority. I declare that you are the Lord of my life and the God of my salvation and everything I do, every word I say and everything I do, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let them be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my God, my rock and my redeemer. I believe that's what we must do every day. Who are you bowing to? If you're not bowing to Jesus, if you're bowing to anyone else or anything else in your life, then you're not living the life that God has called you to. Who is it you're bowing to? Living for God is living for others. We need to have a kingdom mentality. A kingdom mentality that says, you know what? This world is not my home. I'm not laying up treasures here on earth, but I'm looking forward to the day where I'll be with Jesus. And that kingdom mentality says, oh, there's only one person my loyalties lie to, and that's Jesus. And the last thing I would say is we have to surrender ourselves. We have to surrender our self, our self-will. We all have our own desires and our own passions and our own appetites. We need to bring all of those under subjection, bring our body into subjection and surrender to the will of God. And that's what these young men did. They said, look, we will worship the Lord our God and serve Him only. I say that tonight. Would you say it with me? We will worship the Lord our God, our Lord Jesus Christ, and serve Him only. And it doesn't matter what anybody else tells me I'm supposed to do. It doesn't matter what society dictates me as right or wrong. I'll make a declaration right now. Jesus Christ, you're the Lord of my life. And I'm going to live for you. Oh, God, help us, Lord, in this day of shifting shadows and cultural convictions and all these things that are going on around us. Help us, Lord, to have our mind made up and our hearts set on Jesus as the Lord of our life. Would you join me in praying this prayer tonight? Lord Jesus, I surrender to you. All to Jesus, all to you I freely give. I surrender my all to you. And God, in the midst of a society that's ever-changing, ever-demanding, convictions that are being required of me every day, I like Nebuchadnezzar said, you either bend or you're going to burn. Lord, help me not to bend, but to stand and to know that if I'm in the fire, that you'll be right beside me. I'm so encouraged tonight, Lord, to know that no matter where I go or what I do, no matter what's going on in my life, Lord, that you promise to be with me. And God, I thank you tonight in the midst of, of a society that is so confused and so upside down that in the midst of it all, that you're walking right beside me. And God, I align myself with your word. I make a declaration, Jesus, this is your word. And it's your word. It's my word. It's my life. And I will live, whether I live or I die, I will live and die for you. I declare your Lordship over my life. Jesus, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with the Holy Spirit, Lord, so I can walk upright before you and be the man that you've called me to be. Fill me with the Holy Spirit that I can walk in the power and the authority and be able to resist all the attempts of the enemy to discourage and defeat me. In Jesus' name, I thank you for it. I ask you tonight, is Jesus the Lord of your life? Have you bowed your knee to him in this life? Because I want you to hear what I said. If you acknowledge him now before men, and if you make your stand before God tonight, then one day when you stand before Jesus, he will acknowledge you before the heavenly father. Confess him now, and one day he'll confess you. He will say, I know you, and he'll receive you as a good and faithful servant. That's what you need to do. Make him the Lord of your life. And let's live the life that God's called us to and be what God's called us to be, not bending or bowing to the pressures of this world, but living a full life in fulfillment and obedience to the will of God in Jesus' name. 
Amen. I want to thank everybody for watching the service tonight. I pray that God has spoken to your heart, touched your life. As you engaged him, I believe that God has given you something that will change you forever. And I also want to remind you of a few things you need to know as our Abundant Life Church family. Uh, we are continuing with our in-person services on Sunday morning. We're evaluating our attendance to determine if we need to go to two services right now. And we hope to let you know later this week as to what our plan is. We don't want to eliminate anybody because we've reached capacity on Sunday morning. So we'll let you know this week if you'll watch Facebook. We'll keep you uh, updated and posted on what is happening and uh, we'll determine where we're going from there. I also want to remind everybody we're excited about going back to in-person services this Wednesday. We'll continue to be online, but we also will be in-person if you'd like to come. All activities, all ministries will take place in the sanctuary. We won't have any other children or youth activities at this time, but you are invited to come by yourself or as a family and be involved in our worship experience on Wednesday night in person, or you can watch online. I'd like to thank everybody for your consistency in giving, your faithfulness and support. You guys have been absolutely amazing. I just pray God's continued blessing and favor be upon you and your family. Continue to stay connected, and let's see what God is going to do. We are coming through this better and stronger, and so I'm excited about the future. I really feel in my spirit that we're going to see some amazing and remarkable things as we go into the fall season. So I love you guys. Stay posted. Also, do need to mention that we are still working hard on our youth retreat, and that's something we're still in the process of evaluating. But you stay engaged in that and see where we're going, and we'll talk to you soon. God bless. Have a great one. We'll see you then.